Welcome back to Reviews and Rankings with Robbie Sobel. Today, I take a look at George A. Romero's long lost film, The Amusement Park. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm incredibly excited to talk to you about a film that was thought to be lost for nearly five decades, George A. Romero's The Amusement Park. Following the success of Night of the Living Dead in 1968, George Romero made several films that ranged in their popularity and their quality. There's Always Vanilla, Season of the Witch, The Crazies, and Martin. It wasn't until 1978 with the release of Dawn of the Dead that George Romero thought he was really back on the scene. But during that time, you know, he put out a lot of films that I personally enjoyed and many others do as well. During that time, there was another film that he shot that was thought to be lost and for many years, most people didn't even know existed. George Romero didn't even talk about it. So 1973, he was contacted by the Lutheran Society to commission a film about aging and how society deals with those who are getting older in the world. One of the interesting things about the amusement park, it only has one real legitimate actor, and that's Lincoln Mazeal, who co-starred in Ramiro's vampire film, Martin, just a few years later. Now, the amusement park runs just a little under an hour in length, but George Ramiro uses all of that time to really maximize the message and the themes that he wants to get through to you, the viewer. Now, I'm gonna get total spoilers here. It's available on Shudder. If you're not a subscriber to Shudder, I highly suggest you do so. Personally, myself, I have over 1,700 movies on either Blu-ray DVD or VHS. Nearly a 1,000 of them are horror films, and I still subscribe to the service because there's gonna be films on there that I don't own, or exclusive content that drops that you're not gonna get anywhere else like the amusement park. Now the amusement park opens up and you actually see Lincoln Mazeal confront the audience. He speaks to them, kind of breaking the fourth wall, introducing himself, talking about how he's just about to turn 71 years old and kind of prepping the audience for what they're about to witness. After about a two or three minute introduction, we get the film itself, and it's Lincoln Mazeal's character. He's an unnamed man, we'll just consider him the old man, and he walks into a white room, really with nothing else in it except another version of himself, beaten and battered, crying on a uh, chair. This kind of happier version of the old man asks, why are you sitting on the chair? Why don't you want to go out and do anything? And that old man who is beaten and battered warns him there's nothing out there. Don't go, don't go. That nicer, fresher looking old man kind of dismisses those warnings and heads out the door and he arrives at the amusement park. Now this amusement park on the surface seems pretty normal. There are people there having a good time, riding a roller coaster, uh, kind of doing games on the side and eating cotton candy and food. Pretty much your average day at an amusement park or a county fair, but things quickly turn. Now this is where the amusement park kind of goes from just a, a, a standard kind of film to really hammering home the themes uh, that he was hired to hammer home. In this film, there are scenes that really stood out to me. There's a scene here where the old man goes on a roller coaster. Now, personally, I'm not a fan. I hate roller coasters. I don't like anything that's high up that feels unstable. I kind of get feeling of vertigo. Uh, totally can relate to Jimmy Stewart in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Check that movie out. It's freaking good. So he gets on this ride and he's riding and you can see as it's starting to go faster and faster, he's getting very uncomfortable with himself. And you see just for a moment, a visual of another character and it's kind of a character that symbolizes death it has like the death mask and a pitchfork and that's a character that you see uh, periodically throughout the film there's no real big moment where this big angel of death kind of hovers over him or anything like that but it's just kind of there to remind you that this film is not your standard affair and that's really important to note because throughout this entire film this old man's journey through the amusement park feels like a dream. And what I mean by that is that when you're in a dream, when people are talking, sometimes they say things that really don't seem to make sense and you can't comprehend it. Or people are acting in a way that is different than you'd see people acting in your regular normal life. You might be in one room and walk into another and it's completely different and doesn't make sense. But in that dream, everything does tie together and you don't really 
ask too many questions. That's what this feels like in the amusement park. There's also a scene where you see a young couple go to visit a fortune teller. And the fortune teller asks, oh, what do you want to know? And the young couple says, oh, we want to know uh, what's it going to be like when we get old. And the Lincoln Mazeal, the older man character, kind of overhears this and oversees this. And you get kind of a flash to what their future could be. And it's the man of the couple being very sick, on, almost on his deathbed at home. And this old woman is out to a payphone, and she's trying to call a doctor and she doesn't have much money left or much time to use the phone. And she doesn't know why no one wants to come and help. And then the call gets dropped and she goes out to ask anybody for, I think it was just like a dime for a phone call. Cause back in the seventies, that's all it was to make a phone call. And no one will listen to her and she's stopping people. And as she's doing this, there's a marching band that kind of is coming into focus and it's getting louder and the sounds are getting uh, even heavier. And you can just feel her anxiety, her depression, her, her worry uh, and her, her grief for her, her husband just all coming in around her. And it's, it's so uncomfortable, but it's so well done. And it's really a scary thought. See, this film is not your traditional horror film, but it's definitely scary in a lot of ways that and hit hit in your heart and in your mind that make you think. Unfortunately, you know, we're all gonna get old one day uh, unless there's a tragic accident or whatnot. So we're going to be experiencing this. So watching a film like this and seeing these themes in play, it's really gonna hit home to everybody. And that's why George Romero is such a smart filmmaker. This movie feels like Romero. It feels like Romero in the pacing, the frantic pacing at times, the shot selections, a lot of these shots are not what you'd learn on like a basic film film course or film class at school. There are a lot of low angle shots and frantic cutting and use of what Romero would describe as dog shots. Basically insert shots that piece the rest of the scene together if you need a little bit extra coverage. All these little bits add together and if somebody showed me this film and asked me who I thought directed it, George Romero would be at the top of the list because this has his trademarks and his stamp on it from beginning to end. Now also going through this film, there are other scenes that really stood out for me as well. There's a scene where the old man kind of seems to be alone in the park. And then we see kind of this group of bikers, which is almost foreshadowing what we saw in Dawn of the Dead with the big biker invasion of the mall where they're fighting the zombies and our survivors who've been hunkering down there for quite some time have to fight them off. These men beat up and mug Lincoln Mazel, the old man, and he's left really beaten. And it just shows how vulnerable the elderly can be because when he gets up from this, no one's even there to help him. We have a scene where the old man goes to find first aid or go to uh, like, like a doctor that's on site and they see him and they just want to like get him in, get him out, don't even want to focus on it. They say, oh, you, let's just put a bandage on your head. And he says, I need more than a bandage. Uh, a bandage is not enough. And uh, the nurse here goes, no, you're fine. Boom, boom, just get you in and out. And it's really scary because you see how the older folks have been treated in nursing homes, kind of just so nonchalant. It's almost like, you, it's terrible. You hear these stories of older folks who are you know, coming towards the end and they almost kind of get pushed out because the hospital just wants to make some room in those beds and they don't want to put the time and the effort in. And that's kind of a controversial thing to say, but I mean, the truth is that that's just what it is. And it's really, really a shame. There's another scene in the amusement park that really stuck with me and it's really sad. There's a scene where a bunch of elderly people are in the amusement park and they're listening to a man speak about a retirement uh, community that he's a part of, that he's selling retirement homes and he's trying to get these older folks to sell their homes and kind of move into what he's selling. And the old man's right nearby and he's listening to all this. And during this, there's a, a younger gentleman who's listening to this whole spiel. And during it, he is pickpocketing and stealing from all of them. Now this pickpocketer spots the old man sitting on the bench and takes a seat next to him says a few kind words to get his attention and kind of get his trust. And during this time, the pickpocket steals, I believe it's like a, like a necklace, or I think it was a watch that was in his jacket. And then he quickly says goodbye and leaves. And by the time that the old man notices that he had been pickpocketed, it was too late. 
and you can just feel and sense the how heartbroken he was that he was taken advantage of and used once again and there's nothing he can do about it and there's nobody there to help him and it really just feels like a like a great representation and symbolism once again of how old folks are just discarded by people in society and used. I mean, you hear these stories about, about it like, uh, you know, old lady mugged on the subway, old man uh, beaten on the street, wallet stolen, whatever the case may be. Older folks are more vulnerable because of their age and health reasons. And they're often a prime, a top target for people like this pickpocket. And that's a damn shame, but it's the unfortunate reality and George A. Ramiro made sure to convey that in this scene. Now, what might be my favorite scene of the entire film is towards the end of the film, we see the old man walking and he he's beaten and he's worn and he's weathered and he seems like he's ready to give up until he sees a little girl sitting with her mother right on, like, on grass, almost kind of like having a picnic and she motions over to him. So he sits down and she asked him to read a book to her. And the book is uh, Little Red Riding Hood, I believe, with the Three Little Pigs or something. And he's reading this to her, and he's really kind of being brought back to life. You can feel the energy in his voice as he's reading the story. She even offers him a piece of chicken, and he hadn't been able to eat all day either. So he's very hungry. And as he's getting through this story, the mother just gets up, packs up her stuff, takes her daughter, and leaves. Doesn't even acknowledge the old man. And as she's starting to get up and leave, you can tell that the old man is rushing, reading through the story, doesn't want it to end. This is finally, he's found some type of solace and something positive in this entire day through the amusement park. And when the girl and the mother leave, he just completely breaks down. He's totally crushed. And it's like his dream, his last gasp is gone. And Lincoln Mazel put on a fantastic performance in this. He was brilliant. You really felt the emotion in, uh, in his performance. And I think it's one that more people have to take note of because uh, Ramiro in his films, there's, you, know, you can watch his movies just on the surface and have a good time, but not too far beneath the surface. There's a lot to say in the forms of social and political commentary. And a film like this, because it was commissioned as an educational film, those themes, those social uh, political commentary elements are really not under the surface at all. You know, this film, more than anything else that, he, that Romero has ever done in his filmography, you know, these themes are above the surface and they really hammer home and they're really just speaking to people and they're there and you cannot ignore them. That's not a bad thing, it just is what it is and it was well done. You know, the film ends with this old man beaten and battered returning to this white room and this time there's nobody there. He sits down on a white chair and then through that door is another version of himself, completely clean, happy, and positive. And we almost kind of get the circle of life. That opening scene once again repeats itself. And it's the same thing over and over again. As this newer, younger, uh, not younger, but <laughs> newer, uh, more upbeat and positive version of himself ignores the warnings of the man we've been watching for the last 15 minutes or so, goes through the door, and away we go. The film closes with Lincoln Mazel uh, speaking to the audience once again, w telling them that, hey, this is what life could be like when you get older. It doesn't have to be this way. Treat people right, be positive, and he lets them know that one day, you know, you'll be at the amusement park too. I'll see you in the park someday. Overall, this is an interesting, and I believe a brilliant addition to the George A. Ramiro filmography. And the saddest part about this film is that, you know, we didn't know about this for decades. George Romero never spoke about it. And a few weeks before he died, uh, him and his wife were able to get a copy of this and they watched it together. And his wife even asked him, you know, why didn't you ever mention this film? Why didn't you even talk about this before? And he even said, he said, you know, Sue, his wife's name is Sue Romero. This was three days I was hired. I went in, did my work and left it. The Lutheran society was not a fan of this at all. They thought it was way too heavy and intense. So they shelved it and they never released it. It was just kind of a three-day trip for Ramiro to play around and, and make a little film that was never seen. And he just moved on to bigger and better things. And the saddest part about that is that 
Sue Ramiro said that during their conversation, she asked him about his legacy, George Merrill's legacy. And he said, nah, no, one, no one's really going to care. And Mr. Ramiro was right about a lot of things, but about that he was wrong. He is one of the best filmmakers to ever live. And I know I speak maybe from a partisan or kind of a biased standpoint because he is my number one goat, my favorite of all time. But even stepping out of that, his films have made such an impact, not just in the horror genre, but in cinema and the world of film in general. No one has ever said a bad thing about George Romero and people always kind of cite his films as an influence, be it large or small. Overall, The Amusement Park is not a movie that you're gonna watch for fun. It's not something that you're gonna check out just for some entertainment, but it's a work that should be seen. It hits home at a lot of important themes that often don't get discussed, but should. And George A. Romero should be proud of it. I know I'm proud of him, and I hope that many others are going to enjoy this as well. As we speak right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a critic score of 95%, which is crazy good. There hasn't been enough of an audience reaction yet to get uh, that put in there. But for myself, is this gonna be on my Ramiro Mount Rushmore? No, it's not, but that's not a bad thing because he has so many great films. This is definitely not bottom tier either. This is in that upper echelon, right below kind of his top group of films. For George A. Ramiro's lost film, The Amusement Park, I'm going with a more than respectable four out of five star rating. All right, guys, what did you think of the amusement park? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you have an interest in watching it? If so, you can drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, you can hit like. If you loved it, you can subscribe. And of course, you can hit me up at Instagram and Twitter at RankingsRS. So keep watching movies, guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. And maybe one day I'll see you at the amusement park. <laughs>